Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. For those of you that don't know, I love Arcane. I could talk about it forever, but that's not what we're here to do. Today, we are going to make something from Arcane. And one thing that I saw when I first watched this and knew I needed to have it was Echo Stopwatch. We have five minutes till they're out of there. I absolutely love how this thing came out. There's a lot of things I really love about it. For one, uh, I tried to be super detailed with the paints. I was uh, referencing a very specific frame for these paints, so I had to hand mix a lot of them. Also, this 3D model is amazing because one, it's accurate, it's pretty, and two, the clock hands move, and they move at the same ratio as actual clock hands. It's it's just really cool, like what the heck? Look at that. And not only did they make this mechanism, but they also incorporated it into an existing element of the watch, this gear. It's visible in the show, but they incorporated it so you're actually using this to turn the watch hands. This is just genius. I will be linking, of course, this 3D file down in the bio for anyone who wants it, because this is just amazing, really. They also incorporated a spot for you to put your own chain in. So if you want to learn how to make your own one of these, I'm going to show you how to do that start to finish. Everything from slicing, printing, sanding, painting, everything with these gears and how to make them smooth, I'm going to be showing you start to finish. And if you stick around till the end, you get some cool glamour shots. So, so without any further ado, let's get into it. So this is the 3D model we are going to be using today, and it is by this user. As you can see, it's a really pretty file and it's accurate. It looks like his watch. And here we can see a kind of x-ray view of how these gears are working to move these hands in the same ratio as a real clock. It's really cool. So to make this, you'll see that we are going to need this back part that houses all of the gears here. And we're going to need this surface to be really smooth so these gears can slide smoothly over each other. And we will need this front part. That's just gonna come over top of everything. It's just for looks. So we're gonna lay this front part down on the bed just like this. And the modeler recommends turning on ironing for this print. And that's basically just gonna make our top layers look super smooth and reduce our sanding time. And I'm also going to bump the layer height down to 0.15 millimeters instead of 0.2, just to make the size of the watch look really clean and also reduce our sanding time. That ironing is making the top layers look super smooth. So for the back side of the watch, we're actually printing the exposed part on top of supports. And that might seem counterproductive because you're making it look worse. But as I said before, we need the inside to be super smooth so those gears can move freely. And the ironing did its trick. The top side of the watch looks super nice. The back side also came out pretty well. That part on top of supports is gonna be pretty ugly, but the inside of this is gonna be smooth. And these little gears are just self-explanatory. As you can see, this thing works straight off the print bed. So for the top side of the watch, I started out with a 150 grit instead of something rougher like a 60, because that ironing really helped us out. But one thing it did not help us out with was getting into those little details, because that was an absolute pain. And that's where sanding twists come in. These things are an absolute lifesaver. I actually use these in a lot of my different projects, but they especially came in handy for this. They're basically just little sticks of sandpaper. They come in different grits. You can get them on Amazon. They're super useful. The only thing is that the ends of them get worn out pretty easily. You just have to cut them off and you're good to go. And another little tool I've been using are these little sanding files. They're like knives of sandpaper. These can get into spots even the sanding toys can't, and they've been super helpful too. And as you can see in this case, I'm using it to get in these little tight crevices that the sanding toys couldn't reach. It's pretty much the same story with the back side of the watch, except I had to do a lot of extra work because as I said, we printed it on top of supports. So I started out with a 60 just to knock down all those support marks and layer lines. The sanding twigs came in clutch again with the places that the sandpaper just had a hard time reaching. Now, Interbondo, that red toothpaste we all know and love. Personally, I'm not one to put Bondo all over my prints. I mainly just put it places I know will really need it. So I put it here on the back of the watch because the support marks were just really bad. The back of this exposed gear for the same reason. 
Man, I think I need some more Bondo on this thing. I, I don't think I'm putting enough on there. And finally, the claw cans themselves. And I actually have a good reason for this. These parts are so small and triangular that they're basically made of layer lines. So if I were to go and sand all those lines down all the way, I'm going to just take off most of the plastic on these things. And I want them to stay built up the way they are, but still be smooth. So that's why I'm starting them out with a lot of Bondo, and then I'm just gonna sand down the Bondo to make it smooth and try not to take out too much of the plastic in the process. Priming on top of a prime box. <laughs> this primer came out super terrible because I was praying super far away and also I just hadn't taken care of this paint can, so it just came out like crap, but it's okay because I'm gonna sand this down anyway and I just needed to get a coat on there. So after that, I sanded this primer a lot. <laughs> so I started with a 200 and worked my way all the way down to a 600 grit. I just wanted to get this thing as smooth as possible before painting it. And I didn't get it on film, but I actually wet sanded this thing, which was probably way overkill, but I just really wanted this thing to be super smooth and look metallic. So this is how everything was looking after all of that sanding. And I think we're ready for paint. So I used the Vallejo Game Color Paint Kit for D&D minis. These colors fit the watch perfectly and they were exactly what I needed. But of course, if you don't have this specific kit, you can always mix your own colors. So as I said before, I was referencing a very specific frame for this. For the metal parts of the watch on the outside, we could go for a gunmetal color, but that would be more similar to the base of the watch hands at the very center, more of a gray. These have more of a browner, lighter tint, so I needed to emulate that somehow. So I started by mixing this gunmetal and this brown. We are heading in the right direction, but it's still way too dark and way too brown. So I added a little more gunmetal, and I also added some white to lighten it up, and it ended up perfect. This is exactly the color I wanted. That color actually covers most of the watch, so that was most of the paint mixing done. It was super easy to paint with, it only needed one or two coats, and it was good. I also used it on the outside of this exposed gear. So we have three more colors to mix here, and they're all brown. So first off, we have this lighter leather brown right here. Then we have a darker brown, and then an even darker brown beneath that. So I mixed some brown and a lot more black than I thought. I just had to keep putting it in there. But eventually I got it to a pretty good tone. And I used this color to paint this exposed gear and the back of the watch, and also the front of the watch in between the white parts. It was a good color, but it ended up being super watery, so I had to put like a thousand coats on this thing. And in between every coat, I would have to use the blow dryer to get this paint dried in a reasonable amount of time so I could put the next one on. So for the lighter leather brown color, I started with just the regular brown from the kit because I thought it looked right, but it ended up being way too dark. So I ended up adding this fiery orange, I think it's called, and this color was just right for what I wanted. I used this to paint the brown section on the front of the watch, as well as that little clicky trigger thingy on the outside. So into our friends Bone White and Death White. I guess there's no way to describe that color without talking about death. So if you look at the white on the markers of the watch and the white below the gold part in the middle, you'll see that one of those is more of a cream color and one is more of a stark white. That creamy white color was perfect for painting those watch markers but I had to be super careful and precise with this, so I just got a little bit on the very tip of my brush and just was really slow and careful with this. I'm surprised it looks as good as it does. I actually ended up painting all of these at first, which was a mistake because some of them are supposed to stay brown, so I had to go back and fix all that. <laughs> and I just keep getting lucky with this kit because it actually has a gold, which is perfect for the very center of the watch. Don't even have to mix anything. After this, I added the finishing touch to the front of the watch, which was painting these little markers black. I actually went around all the little edges of these and painted the black while avoiding the white. It was really tedious. So for the claw cans, I painted the center of them gunmetal because remember I mixed that gunmetal color for the rest of the watch to contrast with this one that's going to be in the very center. I couldn't quite tell from the show what colors these gears were on the back, 
So I went ahead and painted the big one gunmetal as well. And I painted the little gear on top silver just to give the back of the watch some pop. And I also went ahead and painted those claw cans silver as well to give them that metallic shine they have in the show. I did end up having to go back and redo some of these pieces because the color scheme wasn't right. <laughs> so yeah, don't make my mistakes. I also went back and added some of that leather brown color from earlier to the claw cans. And the very last step in the painting process was something I was a little nervous about, which was dry brushing some gunmetal and silver onto the watch. For those who don't know, dry brushing is basically putting paint onto your brush and then wiping off as much as possible until you just have a tiny bit left so that when you end up brushing that, just tiny bits of that color end up coming off and mostly onto the high surfaces. So this ends up giving you a pretty cool effect if you do it right. I dry brushed the gunmetal onto the flat surfaces of the watch just to make it look more textured and metallic and then I went back over with the silver and hit just the corners to make it look kind of rough and worn and like that exposed metal is kind of coming out. Honestly, I'm super proud of the results of this effect and I really think it just brought it all together and it was the perfect finishing touch. And here we have all of the finished pieces ready to be put together. And all we have to do now is just put these gears in place according to the picture on the website. Super easy and they should all work together already. And once we get the top of the watch carefully aligned in place, the last thing we have to do is completely manhandle it. I brought this thing into the world, I can take it right back out. You can hear it snap right now. And we can go ahead and snap these claw cans right in here. And the last thing we need is a chain. I've gotta do Echo's iconic watch flip. So this is just an old necklace chain that didn't have anything on it, so it was actually perfect for this. And the little hook fit perfectly through the little chain insert. And on that note, we're done. And this thing looks freaking awesome.